And then our last stop on the social distancing wine tour was at the historic Montanor Estate. And we sat down with the head winemaker, Stephen Weber. He talked a little bit about the 2016 Reserve Pinot Noir, and we also discussed a little bit about their biodynamic uh, viticulture techniques. We're at the historic Montanora Estate here in near Forest Grove, Oregon. Um, I'm sitting with the head winemaker, Stephen Weber, and um, he's going to tell us a little bit about uh, the final bottle in our six pack collection. Uh, this is going to be the 2016 Montanora Estate Reserve Pinot Noir. Um, so, Stephen, thanks for being here today and Absolutely, yeah. talking with us. Absolutely. You know, I start off by telling me a little bit, just a little, uh, your history here, mm -hmm. um, how you came to find Montenor, and uh, how you've sort of integrated into the into the crew here. Yeah, absolutely. I've been um, at Montenor now for going on 15 years. Um, I came down here in 2006 after a meeting with uh, Rudy Marchetti, who's an integral part of Montenor um, and its operation here. And indeed, he was the owner at the time when I came. Uh, to meet with Rudy and at the time I took a position um, of assistant winemaker and going on from there you know it's, it often happens in a job you kind of get some evolution going on and some departures here and there and um, uh, myself and a couple of colleagues um, kind of shared the winemaking for a few years from 2009 to 15 and then finally um, I took over as head of, of all winemaking operations in 2016. So as you can see, it's been quite a long, um, quite a long tenure, and every year I feel I've, you know, chipped away, and I learn something else a little bit more um, from a repertoire and uh, from a knowledge here at Montenor. So um, it's Great. been a really good journey. Great. And so with this being uh, the 2016 bottle, this would be safe to say this is your first reserve that you had. You were head winemaker from start to finish for. That is correct. Yeah, so, yeah and it is, I, I, was, I was very much blessed, I feel, with, uh, you know, to, to step into those big shoes. Um, to have 2016 growing year and harvest um, was, was beautiful. Um, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't fault the year and the, and the wines we produced from it were very good, I feel. Mm. Awesome. Um, one thing I definitely want to talk about today, uh, I understand that, um, you know, the viticulture, the growing of the grapes is a really important part of mm -hmm. what Montanor is and sort of the, the mission statement here. I was hoping maybe you could talk a little bit about um, the, the, the viticulture and what the, the goals are and you know what are the processes here at uh, Montenegro. Yeah, so so synonymous with my with my time here um, and so working with Rudy, um, it's, it's been a, a great partnership because Rudy, just prior to me coming here, had started to introduce an organic program at Montenegro and this is what we've really founded ourselves on um, along with our biodynamic agriculture. So ever since I've been here, all I've ever known is organic and biodynamic agriculture, and I'd only had a little bit of um, prior involvement in that um, in Australia uh, back in 2001, so I didn't really know an awful lot about it at the time. Um, but really, the foundation of the organics here and the biodynamics is, is about, about producing the quality of the fruit, really good fruit, without any um, artificial herbicides or pesticides, um, fertilizers, um, so eradicating all those um, of the property um, and making what you call a really good organic program here with good stewardship of the land and obviously we're looking for good, for good um, uh, comeback in the fruit you know for, for, for the flavors in the fruit and the vine health to improve which indeed it did um, and that's also kind of hand in glove with uh, the biodynamic program uh, which I don't know if we get if we're going to dive too much into because it's, 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 it's an awful lot to, to start it's, it's talking a long about. Discussion, yeah. yeah, which is great. Um, but yeah, there's a lot to talk about with biodynamics, sure, sure. which is a, essentially is you know you need a good um, solid organic program and certification before you could, can start or become biodynamic as well. Um, and biodynamic really kind of encapsulates a farm as a whole and all the inputs that you make into the farm. Um, is you don't kind of like have a lot of outside influences, you just try and keep, keep it tight there. A lot of kind of composting and obviously all natural ingredients to overlay all the good stuff we already do with organics. So, in, in a nutshell, yeah. <laughs> I noticed that you do have the, the Demeter certification right here on the label, which you can see when you look at yours. Um, that is like a, that's a, a private certification group that will sort of look in at your biodynamic techniques and make sure that everything's on the up and up is that 
That, that, that's, that's correct, Jack. Yeah, I mean, the certification um, is, is a really important mark um, of, what, of what we do here. I mean, there's a lot of people in the valley who are other wineries who are brilliant stewards of the land and, and they're, they're practicing the organic and the biodynamics. But when you get take the certification, it's, it's a little bit of extra, um, or a lot of extra involvement actually, um, and a lot of inspections and everything's got to be very rigorous in terms of the record keeping. Um, all our ingredients that we can use have to be fully certified by our organic certifier and by Demeter, who are the biodynamic certifiers. So to, to get that mark on the bottle takes a lot extra. Um, and we feel that you know it's a minimum of a three year transition anyway for the whole vineyards and the winery to even get there. Hmm. And then every year, sometimes multiple times a year, you're inspected, um, sometimes at random, sometimes planned. Um, so it's a lot, a, lot, a lot of hoops to jump through but I think it's worth it at the end when you can legally yeah. put those two marks on your bottle to signify to customers that they have a, you know, something that's been produced with integrity um, and a, a lot of honest thought going yeah. into that. So, um, one of the reasons that I wanted to include this bottle in my little six pack this time is because we wanted to talk a little bit about um, there's a couple new appellations that have been uh, started by the, the TTB. Um, we call them ABAs here uh, in America, the American Viticultural Area. And uh, so Montanor is possibly even the largest vineyard in the new Tualatin Hills ABA. Is I that? would believe so. Yeah, 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 exactly. So um, what are, what's what's your thoughts on, on the new ABA and, and what do you sort of see as the defining characteristics of the appellation? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's a very timely question because it's only just very recent that we've, we've actually got the the approval, and this is after many years of, of planning. Uh, again, Rick Rudy was a, a big kind of uh, pusher in that, along with Alfredo Apolloni um, and a couple of others as well. So, and it's quite a large area, but I think what defines the Twilight and Hills ABA, and it's really great to have an ABA, to be honest, because you know it's that it's an extra thing to say your sense of place and where you are, yeah. and to signify to others, you know, the wider community that you know you're really kind of in a particular spot here for a particular reason. Um, but I think with the, with the Twilight and Hills, it, a lot of it is about the soil. Uh, so we're on laurelwood soil here. Um, I mean, it's kind of laurelwood with, um, a lot of it is this very fine windblown loose soil, um, kind of mixed in with, with, with basaltic sure. bedrock. Um, but it's, it's a very, really kind of cool soil. Not many places have it in the valley, and we are indeed one of the largest, perhaps the largest winery here yeah. in, in the new ABA. Um, we also, I, I, again, this is particularly significant to where we are, but we're nestled up here right in the northern part of the valley, um, and as part of that AVA, we're a little more sheltered with the coast range. Um, hills just, just right behind our property here. Oh, okay. um, it's slightly in a rain shadow as sure. well. Um, a little bit kind of warmer at harvest, a little bit kind of cooler in the spring. So I think all of those things added up together, I think there's definite significance about why we should in, uh, or be granted an ABA status um, to, to kind of group ourselves and some other important wineries in the area um, to, to, to say why we're here, you know, and, yeah. and what makes us a little different with our wines. So. Great, well, it's definitely a, an exciting development. Um, and so uh, the last thing I just want to cover with you is uh, let's just talk about this specific wine here a little bit. Um, tell me what your uh, what, what your experience was in that mm. year in 2016 your first year here as head winemaker and um and you know maybe some of the uh, uh the stylistic uh, goals that you had in mind when you were i don't know if this was like a barrel selection mm. or yeah if, there, if there's always the uh, specific blocks of the vineyard that are reserved for this bottling or what but uh, yeah absolutely yeah so uh, you know as I, as I touched upon before the 2016 was, was a was a blessed first Vintage is head winemaker. Everything is very nice with the vintage. Everything, the timing of the fruit, when the fruit came in, the quality of the fruit. Um, so thankfully, I didn't have too many kind of issues as a winemaker to, to, to solve, uh, which was a big, uh, you know, a big relief for me. Yeah. Um, and so with our reserve, our reserve is kind of the pinnacle of all the different vineyards we farm at Montenor. Um, and it's, it's about a 50, sometimes 50 to 60 barrel um, lot, which are all hand-picked or cherry, cherry picked barrels, if you like. Um, and they, arguably they come from our best, you know, the, the barrels come from our best blocks, um, and the blocks on the property that we've known for over now 30 years. Um, oh, wow. they've been plant, the vineyards were originally planted between 1982 and 85. So we've got some really kind of old vine quality material here. Um, a great cooperage program downstairs, um, 
Cooper is a you know, wood that works with our wines. Um, and over the years, again, we've kind of honed that. So there's been a lot of honing going on with the, with the vineyards and the fruit. Mm -hmm. And so when we come to make our reserve, um, we make several single vineyard wines, but they're only like maybe four to six barrel lots. Um, important, but, but very small. And then so we, we cherry pick all the other um, barrels and also do a lot of blending trials to produce our reserve Pinot Noir. Um, so this wine, is, a, is a, there's an awful lot packed into this wine from a beautiful vintage. I feel, and it's got some really nice nuances. It's got lots of cherry. It's got um, a beautiful color, that's for sure. Yeah, it's got lovely kind of black cherry, kind of black currant going on. Very kind of alluring nose uh, mm -hmm. to kind of draw you into the glass. Very, very classic Pinot Noir. It is indeed, yeah. And um, so, so the, the point with our reserve, with our Pinot here, is, is to, I think, really example to people um, a real, a real slice of the Montenor estate, if you like, um, and how um, diverse our, our 200 acre organic and biodynamic vineyard can be, and, and what it can give us as, as material ingredients here into this wine. So That's great. Well, yeah. I'm really excited to, to share it with you, and I'm excited to share this glass with you. So thanks cool. so much for, uh, cheers, for yeah. talking with us today. I really appreciate Absolutely. it. All right. Cheers. Enjoy. Cheers. Yeah. Thank you.